Taylor, with a startled face, pointed to Aiden and stammered, y- you you just, just stood there, saying nothing? Among all the attention, Aiden slowly came over to Taylor. Everyone's breaths were held. Aiden looked at Taylor, who was shaking all over, and smiled. I'm sorry, but I am the president you despise. As soon as the words landed, everyone burst into an uproar. Aiden's recognition seemed like an oncoming typhoon. In that moment, Aiden suddenly raised many pegs in everyone's eyes. It turned out that the mysterious group president had always been around them. Many people were frustrated that they hadn't figured it out, hadn't known that there was a diamond in the rough among them the whole time. Outside the office, Allison and Gina, who knew Aiden, were also incredibly stunned. They recalled sharing an office with him, not ever knowing the difference. And at the same time, they finally understood. Why else would Aiden be so outstanding? How else could Aiden be so free in the company to work whenever he wanted? Why else did Aiden win the rookie award? Why did Hardy come to visit Aiden when he first got hired? Why was Hardy so good to the finance department? All those mysteries were solved at that moment. If Aiden was the president of Night Owl and the real controller of the company, everything else could be explained. Allison and Jordan Starr, the HR director who was also present, gave each other stunned glances. They were the two who had interviewed Aiden at that time, but it was such an absurd twist to uncover. Two subordinates had interviewed their boss and almost never hired him. If it hadn't happened to them, they wouldn't have believed it. In their hearts ran a burst of fear. They were glad that Aiden had not gotten passed over in the interview. Otherwise, they would have become the laughingstock of the whole company. Gina thought back to her hazing Aiden when he had first been hired. If her relationship with Aiden hadn't been smoothed over since then, she may have fainted on the spot. But there was one person who really couldn't handle the news. That person was Jonah Cooper from the International Affairs Subdepartment, who just had a conflict with Aiden not long ago. At that moment, his face was white. He was clutching at his chest, and he found breathing to be extremely difficult. He recalled that he had just tried to put Aiden in his place. He could no longer bear the rising fear in his heart. He stumbled out of his office door and fainted. By Jonah's side, Zinnia Barber gave Aiden a complex look, but she completely ignored Jonah, who had fallen down beside her. Suddenly, she had some understanding of Aiden's words to her earlier that day. Amid the chaos of the reveal, Taylor was practically ready to beg. He pointed at Aiden with horror on his face and trembled. So, you've been watching me then? Taylor recalled Aiden's performance in front of him when he had first gotten the job. Then he recalled that his plans were almost torn to pieces by Aiden's own hand, and suddenly he realized. From the beginning to the end, this was Aiden's plan. Aiden had snuck into the finance department and observed its work himself from the perspective of an employee. Diana had then handed him the crucial evidence he had needed to take Taylor down. Even Hardy had suspended the acquisition activities and returned to the company, presumably because of Aiden's notice. From beginning to end, everything had been planned by Aiden. Taylor had thought highly of himself, thought he was a genius and only someone of equal genius could even come close to taking him down. But that simply wasn't the case. Aiden had been five steps ahead of him at all times. Taylor looked into Aiden's eyes with astonishment. How could this man be so young and yet so intelligent, so prepared to ruthlessly uncover misdeeds? Thinking about it, Taylor was more and more depressed. I was so sure that no one could catch me. I was too proud to see. Taylor looked at Aiden and shook his head, but his eyes flashed with a touch of madness. Aiden frowned, and Hardy was keen to notice the look as well. Taylor, what are you thinking of doing? He asked cautiously. Then he stepped forward toward Taylor. But Taylor had already quickly torn the key pages out of his notebook and stuffed them into his mouth. You devious, spit it out! Although Hardy had already grabbed Taylor's upper body and pushed him against the wall, he had no time to stop Taylor from swallowing the paper. Taylor coughed repeatedly because he was too eager to swallow, but his face was delirious with joy. <laughs> now you don't have any evidence, do you? You don't have to search my cell phone. I've already eliminated the records in it as well. But out of the corner of his eye, Taylor noticed Aiden's self-assured expression. He narrowed his eyes and roared. What are you thinking about, hmm? I've gotten rid of all your evidence. <laughs> However, 
Aiden's face was light, and when he spoke, he even spoke with a slight sense of irony. Taylor, how unprepared did you think I was? Taylor suddenly felt uneasy and said nervously, What do you mean? With Aiden's skill, it would have been easy to prevent Taylor from destroying the evidence. But the reason why he didn't act was because that, too, was part of his calculations. Aiden looked at Taylor's desperate madness and shook his head sympathetically. The book in your hand was just a copy. To Taylor's terror, he reached into his pocket and pulled out another notebook. The original was right here. Taylor's face twisted. No, you must be lying to me. He frantically struggled to rush forward and grab the notebook, but Hardy's strength could not be underestimated. Taylor couldn't shake his grip, essentially shackled to the wall and forced to watch.